obviously, yeah, you're, you're going to be concerned at that stage, you know. Um, we, were, we were playing second fiddle at that point. Um, God, we were setting the terms of the game, if you like, at that particular point. Uh, they were very strong on their own puck out in particular. But they were getting to breaking ball as well. It wasn't just all clean primary position. They were winning it was secondary position as well. And they were a bit, that bit more efficient as well. I think we hit a few poor wides there, you know, during that phase as well. That would have kept us maybe a little bit closer. So, um, yeah, you're right. We were definitely, you know, playing second fit at that point. But the response of the boys was good. Uh, you know, we managed to close in on their puck out a little bit. We managed to get a few more possessions into our players in the middle third. Keane, David Reedy, uh, Darryl Dunneman, Garode, Tom Arrissey, they came into it at that stage. Our half back then became very solid and stopped the ball going in behind them. And it was a good platform for us coming into the last 10 minutes and we closed out the, fir this, the first half very strong. And I think we didn't realise it at the time, but I think the, the game was in a pattern at that stage that we didn't realise it was in. We were in ascendancy and we stayed there for the rest of the, of the game. Um, I don't know. The, you take you take different things from different games because there's different challenges. Um, you know, we had a lot of tight games this year uh, coming home down the stretch. I think probably we gave ourselves opportunities to finish games like we did today during the year, but we didn't do it, and we allowed the opposition to come back into the games in those last seven, eight, nine minutes. And that was disappointing in those games because we had given ourselves a good platform of being six up, seven up, should have gone, you know, maybe five, could have gone six, and seen the game out more, in a more comfortable manner. And instead we made it very, very difficult on ourselves and it went down to the wire. So that for me was one of the most pleasing things is that we just kept driving on today when we got to that p position. And, you know, listen, I think the last three weeks have, has been good to us. We've had a chance to take a break. We've had a chance to get a bit of work done. And for me, our performance is another step up from where we were coming out of the back of the Munster Championship, so that's, that's encouraging. Did, did it have any shape well, listen, it helped us, it gave us time to solve a few problems as well, you know. Obviously, you know, when Declan was out, we had to solve that riddle, and, you know, I'd be very happy with the way William started in there and the work that he got through. Um, really great leader, and I suppose, you know, took on the mantle of leadership in that position from Declan, so, you know, that was a, a really good natural fit for us there and one that we're, we're, we're happy with. And uh, yeah, just, it was a solid performance. How would you assess Declan's defense? Like, is there any hope? He's got every chance. Uh, we just have to wait and see how he's able to cope with a bit of work during the next uh, week to 10 days. We'll give him every opportunity to, to state his claim. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. John, you made that call. Yeah. Four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. When you actually declared him publicly, declared him out of the game. Yes. Three weeks. You know, as these things are, that was was that deliberate? You just said, right, we're moving on. We know we're not going to have. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we didn't want that in uh, indecision to be hanging over us, you know. Uh, so we needed, like, if he was out, we needed to have a a real live replacement. So in order to give that player the headspace to really take on that mantle, it was, it, the space needed to be completely cleared and no ambiguity about whether he was in or out. He was out. And it was the right call. Uh, Declan wouldn't have been fit to play today. We hope we'll get him back on his feet during the week onto the training field and we'll see where we go from there. But I think that was what the reason why and the rationale why. And plus, <laughs> there's another reason. And that is that when you've got all that speculation and you've a lad who's trying to go to work and trying to live and get on with his life. He wants to be able to go to the shop, get a bottle of water, you know, just get on with his life. And he doesn't need people asking, will you be okay? Will you be playing? Are you going to train? How are you? You know, give these boys a bit of breathing space by taking away the, the ambiguity and let the whole country know, listen, you're out and that's it. Okay, so nobody has to ask that question 5,000 times in the space of four weeks to him, you know? And to try and grow up? Sorry? To try and grow up? No, grow doesn't play six well. <laughs> Sorry? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, no, listen, uh, and I'm not saying no it wasn't, right, I'm saying 
they, for us, we had to have a conversation. You know, we had to go away and reflect for a period of time. But we also knew that we needed to make the decision, you know, pretty quickly. And once we got back in the training field and got into the serious work, that we needed to have it ready to go. So it was, it was. Listen, it was a brief enough conversation. We went with it and we said, let's go. And you know, as I said earlier, you were replacing a leader with a leader, and a guy who's very experienced with another very experienced player. And William has played six for his club on numerous occasions. And we'd seen him play six for his club on numerous occasions. So, you know, you just have to put faith in your, in your, in your, uh, in your gut and in your instinct and go with it. And to be fair, the entire group bought into it straight away. Well, listen, I've often said it to the lads, you know, um, I don't need, or they don't need any further success to demonstrate uh, to them or me or anybody else, you know, that they are a great team. You know, they have been a, f a fantastic bunch of men. They are and will continue to be a fantastic bunch of men, no matter what happens. Uh, that is something that obviously is a point of focus, but it's not... You can't concentrate on the finishing line. You have to concentrate on the piece of work that's in front of you. And we've done that very successfully right throughout the season. That's been there since the day we left here last year. You know, that was always going to be there as a question. Could that be done or will it be done? But like, all we're worried about is, can we win the next match? And can we give ourselves an opportunity to win the next match? Uh, so we've, we've managed that well. Uh, I suppose, listen, we're very experienced. They're very experienced and, you know, We've had enough to worry about, to be honest with you, besides that. Like when you're losing the likes of Sean Finn, Declan Hannan, Keane has had injuries. You know, we've had a lot to contend with and we've had a, you know, a barrage of really strong challenges coming at us in the Munster Championship. So we haven't had time to look very far down the road at all, only just take it week to week, session to session, and be the best that we can in, in, those, in those moments and not wish it away on ourselves either, you know. John, a lot of talk ahead of the game about the, the form of Aaron Gillan. And look, he's, he's a marked man every game he comes into, but to uh, grab the two goals and the second one at a really crucial time, the first one as well, early on in the game, just, just a word on, on Aaron Gillan. Yeah, listen, he's been in super, super form. He's in the shape of his life, and he's just in a really, really good space. And, you know, he's got such fast hands. He's good in the air, he's good in the ground, you know, left and right. He, he's a, a really, really top class player, great forward, um, but you know, he, he'll, he'll still come out of today saying, you know, there was a couple of chances that got away from him today, you know, a couple of shots from play, you know, that he got, got away from him, so there's always something that you'll feel that could have gone a bit better, so for him, he'll be just focused on today, the good pieces we'll acknowledge, the pieces that can be better, we'll go back and we'll work hard on to make sure that the next day we get back here, they'll, they'll go right for him. And I suppose just a word on, on Cahill O'Neill as well coming off the bench because you do have a, a settled group, I suppose, from 2018 on. It's a lot of that nucleus. It probably isn't the easiest for, for a young player to, to break through amongst all, all the hurlers that, that you have to contend with, but to come off the bench and the energy he's shown and the, the championship he's had so far has been impressive. Yeah, he's, he's shown a lot of maturity for a young lad. He's had a good bit to contend with. It's not easy. It's not easy to fight your way into that group either, you know, but... I think all of the guys that come off the bench today all contributed handsomely and maintained shape, maintained intensity, maintained forward uh, you know, momentum and maintained the scoreboard ticking over. So uh, very happy with the way we finished the game. I thought we finished very strong. John, you picked up a couple of injuries before the final last year, occupational hazards perhaps. Well, do you look to do anything different now for these two weeks? No. Um, Listen, those happened on the Friday night before, tra before the match. The most innocuous of things, uh, just two guys going up for a high ball. Uh, David Reedy came down, landed on his ankle and went over it. Um, Kyle picked up a, a bit of a hammer inside in a, in a small bit of a work. These things happen. The 18 final, we had guys hitting out slitters to the boys as they were doing a shooting drill and Peter Casey went over on his ankle and one of the balls that just happened to go in under his foot on the Friday night. So these things happen. But... We can't allow those risks to impede our intensity in our training and 
trying to be a better team the next day and there's only one way we're going to be a better team the next day than what we were today and that's to work harder again for that so boys know that we've been through this enough of times we have to trust ourselves and trust in the work so is that if something does go wrong we've trust in the next man up to do the job it's a it's an occupational hazard as you say but if you don't work hard you're not going to be better so you're better off staying home altogether then so it is an occupational hazard you do at times have your heart and your mouth as a manager when you know fellas are going hammer and tongs at it and it's only 48 hours out from a match but you know that without it you won't be able to do what's required you won't be able to survive in the the fire pit that is those moments where there's 15 20 people literally scrapping for their lives to get their hand in that ball and if you haven't done it in the previous two weeks you certainly won't survive inside there you know on the day so you have to go after it we'll go after it and we'll take whatever risks are there if we lose another man or two so be it No. Um, as I said earlier, we put ourselves in a position where we could have won a couple of games in Munster. You know, but we didn't do it. We didn't finish it out. We didn't finish out strong. We didn't have the same impact off the bench. We didn't finish at you know athletically as strong as we did today. So listen, it's no, it's a, a it, there's no parallel. There's no correlation. There's no relationship. It's just the way the game went today. That's all. Who will win tomorrow, John? I have no idea. Will you be, I'll stay here and go far for. Sorry. I'll stay here and go far for the match. 